Also on the main menu, you'll have your return. Return is a refund, and that's how you give money back to people if it is not the same day. So if you press number two, it will ask you credit, debit, or EBT. You'll never want to do a return on a debit or EBT transaction, only on credit transactions. If the receipt says debit or EBT, do not return it. So you select the number one for credit, and then it'll ask for your PO number. At this point, it's basically the same as your normal sale. You'll ask the further return amount, and then say pass terminal to customer. So you'll press the green key to get past that, and then it'll have you swipe, insert, tap, or key. And we'll use our chip card again. It'll tell you to pass the terminal to the merchant. And you press the green key. It'll print out your copy and ask for your customers. And then you can remove the card. You can also do returns by typing in the card number if the card isn't available. Say you're on the phone or something like that. If you need to give money back to someone for EBT or PIN-based debit transaction, you'll want to write them a check or give them cash. The number three is a reversal, and that's how you give money back to people if it is the same day. And this will look at the transactions that are currently in your terminal. So by going into reversal, it will ask you how you'd like to pull up the transaction. All will let you scroll through all of the transactions currently in your machine. Reference will ask for the reference number. Clerk number, if you're using clerk numbers, will let you pull them up by that. And invoice, of course, is the invoice number. If you select all, it will show you the first transaction in your terminal. And you can scroll up or down using the up or down arrow keys until you get to the end of the report. Once you have the correct transaction on your screen, you'll want to select it. It'll ask you to confirm, and then it will reverse the transaction. And then ask for your customer's copy. And that's how you give money back to people if it's the same day. One thing that may come up when you're processing a transaction is sometimes it may say amount due. Amount due 10, amount due 20, some amount is due. This means that card did not have enough money on it to cover what you're asking for. The terminal will take everything that it can though, and it'll be up to you to take the remaining amount some other way with cash, check, or another card. It will show up in big bold print on your machine and on your terminal. Just take that amount due some other way with cash, check, or another card, or do the reversal to put the money back on their card. You do need to do something since the machine took money from them. Another thing that can come up whenever you're running a sale is sometimes it will say hold. Hold call, hold card, some kind of hold. That means that card has a flag on it for some reason. That happens a lot around Christmas time or if they've left the state or left the country. Their bank doesn't know what's going on with their card, so they put a flag on it. If that comes up, you can call a voice authorization phone number and get an authorization code, or you can tell them that that transaction was declined and that they need to call their bank. If you decide to call the voice authorization phone number, they will ask you for the card information and the card holder information, tell you if it's approved or declined, and then give you an authorization code. At this point, you'll want to go into the number four for force and run their card again as a credit. At this point, it's the same as a normal sale, but instead of dialing out at the end, it will just ask for the code. At this point, you'll type your code in. The transaction identifier would be located on the original receipt. If you don't have it, though, you can just press Enter. And then it'll print out your receipt and ask for your customer's copy. At that point, the transaction is in your batch, so you're good to go. Your terminal may be set to automatically settle for you every night, but if you'd like to manually settle, you do that by pressing the either the number 7 
or the down arrow key until you see settlement. In which case you'll go into there and it will tell you to close batch and deposit funds, yes or no. Select yes and it will settle out. Another thing you may like to do is your reports. And you'll get that by pressing the zero comma pound star key on the right hand side of zero. Once you've pressed that button, it'll take you to your administration menu. Here, you'll press zero and it'll take you to your reports menu. And you have detail, summary, clerk, and unadjusted tip. Detail is the details of every transaction that is currently in your machine. It'll ask you if you'd like to print or display them. And then it'll print out your report. The summary report is a summary of all the transactions currently in your terminal. It'll tell you the dollar amount and how many transactions are there. And you can print and display this as well. The clerk menu will show you the reports if you're using clerk numbers. It will break it down by the clerk number so you can see what transactions happened for what person. And unadjusted tip will show you any transactions currently in your terminal that have not been adjusted. This is primarily for restaurants and hair salons and things like that. Um, so most of the time you're not going to be set up for tips. But if you need it, it's right there.